Hey, what's up, YouTube? It's Aya Beza, and I am actually going to be talking about boosting the immune system today, as well as immune functions. So, here's to hoping you guys learn something in this video. Alright, so what I'm going to be going over today is going to be immune functions as well as ways to boost the immune system. And with that, I'm going to be covering in the immune function, I'm going to be covering the two major lines of defense and then tips and tricks and food groups, nutrients, vitamins, minerals, all those things I'm going to be adding towards the end of the video. And I have a list of five or six of them. I'm going to be speaking about the nutrients they contain i'm going to be talking about how they aid in immune health and other than that let's get right into the functions of the immune system all right so i'm actually going to be going over the two main lines of defense meaning um i'm going to be covering our first line of defense which is the innate or non-specific defense system i'm going to be covering what that means and its functions as well as then when we're going to go be going over the second line of defense is our adaptive or specific defense system so i'm going to be going over both i'm going to be speaking about their functions what they do for the body and why there are multiple lines of defense now our non-specific or our innate comes with a boatload of stuff so phagocytes our main one skin um mucosal membrane we also have attack cells we have antimicrobial um, proteins all of those things deal with the non-specific defense system so that's our first line of defense um we are born with this obviously you're born with skin obviously you're born with all the, the rest of those things but um so when it comes to this no disease no infection no nothing is it's just not tolerated unless it's a specific disease so flu influenza all that stuff so um it's actually really interesting to think about when it comes to our bodies are like bacteria germs the world is a really disgusting place and us speaking about um or the fact that germs microbials all that stuff does not sink into your body or th seep through your skin into the rest of your body it's actually really crazy the fact that infection does not harm you unless there's a rip or a tear or anything in your like on your skin or any opening in your skin that's actually really awesome to think about um but the innate system is our first line of defense that's the first thing that happens whenever it comes to any diseases or whatnot now we're going to move on to the adaptive the reason why i'm moving on to the adaptive is that that is the main thing that is covering whenever you think about a weak or strong immune system. Remember, we are born with our first line of defense, the non-specific or innate defense system built into us, right? So we come out of this world, not getting any infection unless there's a cut or rip in our skin. Um, but for the adaptive and specific, just like the name entails, that needs to be built up. So, whatever we are and usually you'll think about it i'll have you guys think about it with childhood or our youth whatever we were exposed to um whatever we were exposed to in our youth ends up being the effects of what our body is able to come across and whatnot so whatever our body is exposed to and then it happens later on in life our body recognizes what this disease or illness is and is able to combat that now this can happen, the, how you build it up can happen naturally or inorganically. So naturally would be going to a public restroom and opening the door handle with your hand, walking into a sneeze cloud, you know, sitting down or conversating or even being near um, somebody who's sick, taking public transportation, just exposing ourselves to um, germs and microbes. And then inorganically, it's going to be vaccines, which everybody is familiar with. Vaccines having something enter it through our system, allowing our body to recognize or be exposed to it, um, introducing it to other components. And then having that built into their system or that, you know, plugged into their files of understanding what that is. Remember, having a weak immune system, just because I say that it's built up from childhood, that's just, you know, our main thing. 
what I mean by that is just because you have or had a weak immune system as a child does not mean that you cannot build it up. It will be harder if you're older. The older you get, obviously, the body ends up not being as strong as it once was. So the earlier you can focus on this and fix this, the better off. Um, just like most doctors say, the earlier you catch it, the better off you'll be. So remember, for those, for example, um, I work as a martial arts instructor, so I'm exposed to a whole bunch of families and parenting skills and just I've, I've heard a lot of stories and a lot of the time, even when studying nutrition, it was the fact that parents, there are two types of parents. There are the parents who practice the form of allowing their child to do whatever they want. I literally spoke to one of the parents who had five sons, the oldest one being almost 30 years old, having five sons, raising her grandchild, the youngest um one of her sons was i believe he was 13 literally five sons as well as a grandchild and every single one of them i remember i came and spoke to her because i had seen that she allowed her little boy we were practicing in the gym and she had allowed her little um grandson to i believe he's like two years old play with his toys and whenever they would fall he would just crawl you know pick it up put it in his mouth blah 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 and i was curious um, and I asked her and she openly told me, she was like, no, I practice that with all my sons. Springtime comes, uh, they own a farmhouse. So springtime came, you know, she would open all of the windows, allow everything from the outside to be opened into the inside and allow them that to go through their systems and just have that be their exposure. And they were allowed to go outside, play in the mud, wrestle, do whatever they wanted, um, allowing their system to be exposed to it. And every single one of her sons, she said, she goes, I never really had, I never had a medical bill dealing with a disease or an illness. It was always broken bones, broken, like, but when it comes to their immune systems, it's strong. And I was actually really impressed by that. And then I also spoke to a whole bunch of parents and saw some studies about um, parents who are, obviously when you're a parent, you're going to be pre protective or even possessive, especially if that's your first child. The downfall of that is the fact that when people do that, it's um, you end you end up putting more harm to your child, especially when they grow up. So, and I know that somebody like understands that. Oh, maybe that was your parent, or maybe you grew up with a parent that was very very strict and never allowed them to go outside and isolated them and whatnot. So the parents who do practice that and isolate their children, not really allowing them to go outside, or even the children now in this generation where they're they don't want to go outside, they don't want to play, they don't want to. You know leave the house and they're always cooped up indoors playing video games or even on their phones or devices a lot of the time those um we've seen a rise in weaker immune systems and now let's move on to our little tips and tricks all right so going over our vitamins foods um nutrients minerals all of those, I'm going to be covering vitamin C. Whenever you think about vitamin C, you obviously jump into the idea of citrus fruits. Now, that's a really great way to get your vitamin C in. A way that I like to do it is every single morning, I'll end up, I'll wake up, I'll make, I'll have a glass of water, which is probably around 10 ounces to 12 ounces. Glass of water, um, squeeze half a lemon into it, and because I'm so used to drinking lemon water, I find it bland, and that's just my personal preference. But um, then I add a little bit of honey because I have a major sweet tooth. And what that does is it just flushes your system, and you can also get that vitamin in there, which is really cool to add on, um, as well as hydration. Now, that's what I like to do when it comes to uh, vitamin C. You can also find a really cool tidbit that I learned um, last year in my nutrition class was that red bell peppers contain ounce for ounce twice as much vitamin C than you would find in a regular citrus fruit, like a lemon, um, an orange, all those. You can find twice as much vitamin C if you add that into your diet than you would get from, you know, eating one orange which is actually really cool, you know, chopping them up, adding it to a salad or even adding it to like a meal, a hot meal or adding it as a side is actually a really great way to boost your vitamin C, especially if you're sick or you're going through an illness or even the beginning of a cold. Adding that on can later on benefit your body. The superfood, broccoli. Broccoli is actually packed with a whole bunch of vitamins and minerals. The minerals are going to be, once again, like I brought them over, zinc, folic acid, and iron. 
that's chocked full when it comes to broccoli and then vitamins will be covering uh, vitamin a c and e so not only do you have a range of minerals you also have a bunch of vitamins that you can grab from this food um whether have it steamed cook it um my next one will be garlic so garlic is actually was recognized in early civilization for fighting infections now obviously we turn to it nowadays or what my mom used to do whenever she saw me or my sister you know starting to adapt a cold um and it was so disgusting it was it was usually always when we had a really bad cold though was that she would what she would do is she would kind of heat up olive oil as well as minced garlic and sometimes she'd even just put the garlic in there but basically heat up those two things and then put them in a spoon and feed them to us they're usually minced so minced heated up garlic and olive oil have us right before we went to sleep have us take a spoonful um take it down and then literally take us to bed and have us cover up with a really really one of those really huge blankets and just sweat it out and we would literally do that for three days and i hate it comes to garlic garlic can actually also help um lower blood pressure so if you have anybody in your family who is struggling when it comes to cholesterol or you know fluctuating blood pressure that can be a really great help and of use to them so my next one being ginger ginger is has always been known as um a food group that would help inflammation um what i used to do was that my parents and i'm always going to go back to my childhood when it comes to this my parents would actually whenever i would have a sore throat they would end up boiling water and then cutting up um, pieces of, or cutting up garlic, boiling it, um, straining it, and then having me drink the water. Disgusting, absolutely disgusting. Did it work? Yes, disgusting, but it did work and it helped so much. But what I do now is if I feel as though I wake up with a sore throat, I'll take a big old spoon of honey and then I'll squeeze some lemon juice on it and then I'll just take it down and I'll do it for two to three days and I'll feel much, much, much better. Um, it would be vitamin D. Whenever you guys think about vitamin D, the idea of the sun comes up, you know, going out for a run, even bathing in the sun right next to the pool. Getting it from your diet is a really great way too to receive that and have that go through your body. We have dairy products, so you have um, cheese, there is Greek yogurt, and then egg yolk, and then there's also fish, so tuna, mackerel. And then you also have orange juice that you can get it. A really great way that I like to add it on is usually getting my Greek yogurt. Um, I'll have a little bowl of Greek yogurt and then I'll have it unsweetened. Uh, add granola, add berries onto it. Granola, add berries onto it and then add a little honey on top. And that'll be my breakfast. It's so, so, so good. So that's a great way of receiving vitamin D into your system. My All right, so my last one is going to be green tea and black tea. And if you're somebody like me, when it comes to caffeine, you'll reach for coffee. And I'm exactly that person. I always choose coffee over everything. That'll be my number one. That'll be my go-to. With this quarantine, I've actually been consuming more and more teas lately. Uh, I make my own medicine ball at home. It's actually really, really great. I love it. Um, but let me talk about the benefits of these two teas so green tea black tea the common component in both is the fact that they have a really uh an increased level of a, of a powerful antioxidant named egcg no i am not pronouncing its medical name absolutely not going to butcher the hell out of that but uh has increased levels of egcg a powerful antioxidant made to enhance the immune functions um as well as it has L-theanine. When it comes to the immune system, L-theanine does wonders. It um, may aid in the production of germ-fighting compounds, a component of the T-cells. So it ends up aiding the T-cells with germ-fighting um, compounds. That's a really, really great way to boost your immune system. I like to drink it late at night, right before I'm going to go to sleep, because it ends up relaxing me. I end up, you know getting drowsy and it's it, it just relaxes what it does is it relaxes the internal organs so other than that if you guys did enjoy this video please give it a like feel free to subscribe join the family this entire youtube channel is going to be based on um or revolving around health and wellness self-care all that stuff i'll be releasing fitness videos um you know what i eat in a day 
uh, vlogs and then even just sit down videos speaking about little tidbits and help and ways to help if you guys have any suggestions recommendations about how i structure edit or even um speak or suggestions about what other things i should speak about when it comes to these videos please let me know down in the comments i'm more than open to um seeing what people think about these videos other than that i hope you enjoyed the video thank you guys so much if you guys have made it this far feel free to like subscribe comment down below and i'll see you guys in the next one